Sam's just dropping the weight block off and we're going to put the drill on and then we're going to do some patching up on some wheat where we have some mistakes and then if it dries up we're going to go on to some spud ground. It's supposed to be dry tomorrow. Got the bag lifter on for putting some seed in the drill. First time I've used it so we'll see what it's like. The initial thing is the points at the end could be better if they were pointed in both directions because when you want to go in at an angle like that they look like they might be a bit sharp. Yeah, I just feel like if the front of it was the other shape, it might be a bit better, but just see, because it's a bit difficult to see this left hand one. Oh, tipping your head too much. Has that gone in? No, not quite. Pull back up a bit. This is one of them things where it'd probably be easy if you weren't using your phone to film at the same time. that's the bag lifter now it'll actually reach over this side as well if you want it to over the railings and the boom is on nearly on C and I think it goes you see E and F so it's not even it's only about a third the way out and it reaches no problem another advantage is I can reach past the crop master to get that bag especially with the pallet forks we wouldn't have had enough reach Got a big Merlot now to reach further back again. Makes it easy having 10 meter booms on them. Everyone was saying the other day that they really whine. It sounds worse on the camera than they do in real life, but they do have a different noise with having a hydraulic transmission rather than a, hydro, uh, a torque converter transmission. But you don't have to ever change gear with them unless you get stuck. This has snapped off the, uh, what do you call it, post knocker they're using and it's got a bit of a twist in it with a circle it's going to take some straightening because it's like beveled to get it nice and warm enough to what we can do it just laughed at it the vice and the hammer so i've just got it in the press now i'm going to try and press it with this old fly press i think i've got the buckle out of it now compared to what it was, so it should be okay. It's quite a good well that for me, you know, Ori. <laughs> Cool that down. We're just patching up here where we chopped the rake straw and the slugs have had it because the seat wasn't quite in deep enough. Anyway, the drill has these actuators on. Then slide a shutter across the thing there. I can't see it because I'm on my back. So that shutter there moves backwards and forwards here. That's like a little ram that goes in and out. Then it shuts half the drill off. Anyway, it doesn't shut off the front metering system, so I've taken this Allen key out here. And that will shut it off manually. Yeah, we turned one side of the drill off, that side, and then we purged it to see. So we had wheat and slug pellets coming out of this side. But then this side, we just had slug pellets coming out. We couldn't work out why, and that's what it was, because it doesn't have an automatic shut off on the front hopper. Anyway, we've done that now with the uh, moving that little slider over and the R clip. So Sam's just going to go where it's poor, where it hadn't chopped through the straw properly because we didn't have it set right. He's going to go up, up and down them few rows there, just so some six metre strips in line with the combine and the chopped straw, and hopefully we'll have a more even crop. We're only putting 100 kilos of seed on just to patch it up slightly where it's a bit thin. We've just got the odd place like this where it's quite thin, you see. So now we've put some new seed into that, and then this side of the drill isn't doing anything other than making funny lines and hopefully not damaging what's already growing. You see where it's the other drill lines with that direction. So there's a row there going across like that. Anyway, it's coming through it. It is just sort of chopping through them a little bit, but they still should grow. So he's, as you imagine, sewing in lines with the combine, but the drill field was drilled at an angle to the combine. So it's not following the exact same pattern, but it'll patch it up, put a bit of slug pellets down and hopefully it'll be more even. It's a little bit greasy coming up the hill. So, 
we didn't want the wheels chewing up where we're not drilling and where it's good so what we're going to do is we're going to take the depth off the left hand side of the drill because we're not using that side that's not sewing anything and it make it a bit easier to pull and then we can keep maintaining the depth on this side okay the right hand side which is what we're drilling with in an ideal world we'd have kept the john deere drill because it was six meters you could have just zoomed up and down that easy but can't afford something that expensive sat around that's the one i'm filming there we go stiff do that now drop that wheel down drop that wheel down and just go all the way along drop the wheels then this won't be doing anything now and it'll just be sewing with that corner of the drill this bush that we've damaged in here is proving quite difficult to get because apparently case don't do them anymore and a few people haven't run me back yet about it but we can get a similar one but it's not got that groove in so we've either got to try and repair this one or make another one There it is, the original fast track. Sam's back from patching up. Topping him up with a different variety of seed now. So what we did this morning was we calibrated the front hopper for slug pellets, the next hopper for gleam, sorry, X stays, and then the back hopper for gleam seed, which is two different varieties of wheat. So he's been sewing out the front hopper and then now he's going to go sewing out the back hopper. And it, like I say, we're just patching up some of them bits where we have the drill set wrong. That's out. Pace out of that now. Trying to get it warm so that the rad seal starts to work. We went on a road run and it flies, but I think the fuel filters are getting blocked now. We're filled it up with diesel. It must have stirred the rubbish up in the tank. So we're only doing 30k now. We were doing 40 a minute ago. So we're going to try and get back to the yard on it. But it's a beast. Yeah, just been on a road run on this, and Richard was with me, and it just I was dropping him off but going to look at a field that was see if it was dry enough to sow and it just started like not getting full revs and then by the time I come back coming up the hill by the yard it was like blah, 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 blah. I'm doing about walking pace and then got to the other side of the hill and pretty much rolled back down so it's by the workshop now so we'll um, check the filters but I'm going to go out on the fast track now anyway so it'll probably be tomorrow actually it looks like it's got a little gauze in here so I might just take this off and see what it's like I bet it's probably done what Andrew's John Deere did the other day but it's just got bits of rubbish in it. It's gonna, I don't want to drop it with one hand recording at the same time. Yeah, so see the gauze is full of rubbish. So I'll just blow that out now with the airline. That's much better now. So I'll put it back together, prime the pump and then it should be okay. Yeah, so I've changed that, pump that up now. Hopefully it won't have any air in the system and it should start up and run fine. Sweet as an up. I'm on the fast track now with the rollers on. This is the field I came to roll on Monday afternoon and then the road was closed, uh, something broke and I had to shoot back the yard. And then I never got back to it, so I left the rolls in the field. Anyway, I've just squashed it down a bit more level now. And then tomorrow, the plan is to, to drill it with wheat. Ideally, we'd have drilled it with the Clayton drill, because the Clayton drill would have leveled it a little bit better, kind of what the rollers are doing. Just squashing them lumps down better than the more drill, because the more drill's not designed to disturb any soil, so it doesn't move any soil. So that's why I'm sort of doing this first. But. The Clayton drill is better on the 936 because it's just a bigger tractor and it handles it better than on the 724. But the Clayton drill is also only half the width of the, 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 the horse drill. So with the 936 still being off the road, we can't locate the parts to fix the drive shaft yet. They've, they've put the feelers out to wherever it makes them and no one's gone back to those yet. And the only other option is one from Fent, which is a week away anyway. So maybe I need to look if there's a breaker that's got one somewhere. So we'll just carry on with the fast track and the 724. So I'll get this rolled. Sam's just doing a little bit more patching up. And then tomorrow we're going to get on some of this spud ground. And we think we've got three fields that we can get through. 
and then it's forecast for rubbish weather then on Sunday. So don't know where they're sowing on Saturday, it'd be a good idea if it then we get terrible rain on the Sunday and it just washes everything because we've done that in the past, we've, we've rushed in to get the ground sown after the spuds. Then we've had torrential rain, all the soil sort of like moved around and because it's all fine particles because it's bin spuds and then it just turns to rubbish, I won't swear. But, but it, it just caps off then and won't grow. Yeah, after these potatoes, the, the best tool would have been the cladding or what Chris and Nanny are doing where they've, they've ploughed up some dry, let it grey off and then they've got a combi drill following the plough now. But it's just a little bit slower doing it, that method and uses a lot a lot more diesel than we, we normally like to use with the whole direct drilling method. And the cladding is obviously the strip till method where it just cuts a slot, sorry, the time goes through and it puts the seed above where your time's gone through to an hour drainage. Got some guests staying again this weekend, so just come up to check everything's okay. Uh, the place, because the doors and windows have been shut for, for this week, so it's looking good. Sunflower and summer barley update. The, some of the sunflowers are now coming out. And the summer barley is starting to turn a slightly different shade of green. It's obviously gonna rain now though, because it's October for probably the next two weeks on Sunday. But well, I'm in the field now and it actually smells of barley, but it's headed up quite nice now. You can actually feel the, the grains have got, have got something in them, so they're quite milky. Whether we'll get it combined, who knows. If we do, it's looking like it could be November. Do I come in and round up it now to speed it up? Or do I just leave it for a few weeks more to see what happens? Don't know, answers on a postcard or below. I suppose one thing is if I spray it off and then flail it in or whatever in the spring, when it rots down, it'll give us some nitrogen back. Lock a bit up at first and mean that the other fertilizer's got to work a bit harder straight away, but we'll get something back from it and obviously some organic matter. On another field now with the rollers, a couple of like wet holes that we're going to just go round and you know, just leveling it off. It's amazing. It doesn't show up on the camera how good a job they're doing, I don't think. But they are... Let me just open the window so you can see better. See over there. That's all for today, apart from the birthdays. We've got Jacob Northwood, Amy Goring, William Edmund, who's 50, and Jack Summers. Loads of birthdays still at the moment. Um, I got a brilliant video from this someone this morning from someone's birthday. It was yesterday of the seven-year-old who was excited because I'd said it about their birthday. So maybe we could show you that tomorrow if his dad doesn't mind because it was quite good at the reaction that you get for children when it's a birthday. And whether, the, whether William who's 50 will be jumping up and down, I don't know. But anyway, got some field work done. I had a play on the MB track. It flies and sounds an animal. And we've also sorted the fuel problem out on that as well. Tomorrow, we're going to get the 49.55 doing some field work as well. So that'll be good. So um, I think Andrew is looking forward to making some black smoke tomorrow. So thanks for everyone that's watching. If you're new, say where you're watching from. Subscribe over there and watch another video up there. And I've got a guest outro as well. So I'll see you tomorrow.